Do you want a pint? Aye, uh, go on, twist me arm. Natalie, can you have a pint, please? Yeah. I'm only having the one, though. Why, are you dodging your round again? Me? Never. No, I'm in training. Uh, I'm playing away tonight, Gary, lad. What, football? No, oh, a better game than football. I'm at it in Warrington tonight. I'm, uh, I'm meeting Greg's mum for a reunion party. Just me and her. What? You mean... Ooh, she was always mad for me. Like putty in my hands. I only had to look at her and she was wobbling. And now fate has brought me back into her life. She's a very lucky lady. And tonight, I'm going to make her very, very happy. Cheers. Let me get sat down. I'm jiggered. What's for tea? What's for tea? I've been toiling for Baldwin all day. I've just walked through the front door and I'm expected to start all over again. Here, Les. Nip down chippy and get us three lots of fish and chips. Eh? Well, I've no time. I'm meeting Charlie West. Look, if you've time to go boozing... It's not boozing. It's business, this. <laughs> business? Charlie West? Only business he knows is knocked off stuff. Oh, and scraggy turkeys, like that one he sold you. Business, my eye. He's boozing. No, it's, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's to do with turkeys, like on a big scale, like a Christmas club. People paying so much money each week. You've had a shave, and you're all spruced up. Oh, that's because, uh, because, uh, we're meeting this contact to Charlie's, and I've been reading in, in the papers that in business dealings, smartness is very important, so... Can you hear this? It's codology. I've no time to stand here arguing. I'm late as it is. He's up to summer. He's always up to summer. Well, at least I've only got two lots of fish and chips to pay for. Hey, Alice, I've got your pint in. Cheers. Oh, but I'm only having the one, though. Now he tells me. You're not as dodging your shout, you. Me? Never. No, you see, Charlie, lad, I'm at it tonight in Warrington. You know, the old upstairs Olympics. Oh, stick to the ale, man. There's less aggregation. Give over. Did you bring the car? Yeah, it's round the corner. Well, you tell me not to park it in the street here. Good lad. Now, come on, sup up. Hey, what's the rush? Here. It's the jag. I'd take care of it. The bloke who owns it doesn't know he's lending it to you. Hey, have you petrolled it up? Oh, come on. I'm filling you full of air. I'm not going to fill the car up and all. No, well, go on, clear off. I'm having a few here. You are not. Our Janice might come in. And I told her me and you were out on business tonight. So sup up and let's go. Oh, all right. Tell you what. You can drop me off at the feathers on the way. The feathers? That's right out of my way. Oh, hang on, hang on. Isn't that the one facing the cemetery? Yeah, it is. Yeah, that'll do nicely. Right, come on, let's go. Yes. Can it be? Can it be? Myra. Yes, it is you. Well, that just has to be Les Battersby. I can't believe it. You're still that beautiful young girl. Oh, come on now. No, without a word of a lie, you have not changed. You have. Still, the minute you opened your mouth, I knew exactly who you were. Yeah? Oh, uh, uh, for you. Like I said, you've changed. Well, come in. Uh, the motor. It'll be, uh, all right, Molly, you're out here, will it? Oh, well, you know what it's like these days. People get a bit jealous when they're seeing you've done well and you've got a nice motor. I had to sell them out because people kept scratching it. Yes, yes, you'll be all right there. Come in. Nice place you've got here, Moira. I used to have a house like this myself. Oh, really? A scotch? Oh, yes, please. Mind you, you know what it's like being a wheeler dealer? You're never home. So I, uh, I sold it and got myself a nice little pomme de terre instead. A what? 
Pomme de terre, it's French, you know. Pomme de terre, it means little pad. Well, it's more of a base than anything else. Pomme de terre, right. <laughs> you learn something every day. So, uh, would you like to be going out for a little night out, or would you sooner be stopping in? Well, let's have a drink here to begin with. Hmm. Cheers. Bon voyage. You know, Moira, when I Greg turned up, I couldn't get my head round it at first. I mean, my son. My son? Yeah, that as well. I mean, all those years. I never knew he had him. You didn't have him all those years, I did. I never even knew he'd put you in the club. Yeah. It's cruel, the tricks life play on you. Fate drives us apart like it did. Or, to put it another way, you and the travelling fair moved on to Wigan and all points north. I stayed in Warrington. You know, Les, working on the Dodgems really suited you. Yeah? Oh, thanks, yeah. Oh. You know, it must have been a hell of a shock for you. Fanning yourself up the duff. I mean, I can imagine you. Desperate to find me. To let me know. Tragic. Tragic. And now, all these years later, here we are. Together again. They always say the first man a woman ever loved is always number one in her heart, don't they? No, you never lose it, do you? That first magic memory. You've not changed, Myra. You're still beautiful. Thank you. I'm just glad you fell on your feet. All this belongs to your old fella, I suppose. You can tell he was worth a bob or two. Listen, Les. I worked very hard to get where I am today. And I know exactly what you mean. With some blokes, marriage is hard work. No. If I'd have been a woman, that's what I'd have done. Sorted myself, some rich fella. Les. I just put these flowers in water. They're really lovely. Oh, the, these will be the stairs, then. I suppose leading up to the bedrooms. You know, I couldn't live in a bungalow, me. No. When I go to bed, I like to feel my knees bending. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I think I do. Mm. Oh, you've got the car in with the flowers. Oh, Hang on. Uh, Let's see. Gone but not forgotten from Pat, Eric and all at number 94. Blimey, well, must have been a right mix-up at the flower shop. You said I hadn't changed. Well, you haven't either. You're still the lying, conniving, low-life toe rag you were when I first met you. And now you're grave robbing as well. You've got me all wrong. No, I haven't. I've always known exactly what you are. Idle. Devious. Just bright enough to get yourself into trouble. A loser. A loser? Me? Oh, come on. I'll tell you straight. When I discovered I was expecting Greg, I did not start looking for you. Look. I broke your heart. This is your way of paying me back. I did not try to find you so you and I could get married and live unhappily ever after. In fact, if I had seen you walking along our street, I'd have run the other way and hid in the coal shed. I might have been stupid enough to get pregnant, but I wasn't that stupid. I was going to spend the rest of my life with you. Look, I don't blame you being bitter. I knew who you were. I know who you are. Greg's told me all about you, including the wife you haven't mentioned. I've not had any time. You had time to pinch these flowers off somebody's grave! I know what you had in mind tonight, Liz. Pick up where you left off with me. You're pathetic, Liz. Oh, these are the stairs, are they? I bet they go to the bedrooms. I admit, I still fancy them. You fancy the money you know I've got more like. Well, there was money I was after. I'd tap up Greg, won't I? Greg! Since his stepfather died, the only money he's got is what I give him. And if he doesn't get himself a job soon, I'll be stopping that. You what? Well, I'm glad we had this meeting, Les. Oh, are you? Yes. It's reminded me what a lucky escape I had all those years ago. Now, get lost, will you? Get yourself another merry widow. Little woman, there's nothing worse. And I was willing to forgive and forget. Well, that's her hard luck, stupid woman. Calling me a loser. That's rich. There's no way I'm one of them. You stupid! 
stupid brat! Why don't you signal? Oh, blimey. 